with a yo ho ho it's tail of the toe so welcome back to let's play in azuma 11 3 team ogre attacks in this episode in azuma national versus italy's orpheus paolo i am worried the game is about to begin but he has not returned i'll bet senior d is to blame lo so i know it Senior D. You must win by any means necessary. Have I made myself clear? Allora, Senior D. Watch the game today closely. Watch every moment. And that is all. We're going to kick straight off into the gameplay. We kind of did all the pre-match story before we arrived. Look at the size of Condor Stadium. That is the most people we've had in the crowd. Oh, mind you, the crowd's only on one side. If they were on the other side, uh, they'd be in danger of falling off, I suppose. But the formation has already been sorted, I believe. Yep, and so you may notice... I didn't really give you much of a chance, like, but you could have noticed that for this match only, I decided to put David Samford back on the team. I don't think he's required, but, you know, this is still his most important match in the game. He's got business with Ray Dark, and he's part of Emperor Penguin number three, which is one of the goal-scoring moves in this match in the anime. There is actually a blank space on the Orpheus team, and needless to say, it's not an accident. The game against Italy finally got underway, and Ray Dark could never have predicted what Paolo was about to do. What? What are you doing? Bianchi is playing just like my father once played. When I was a boy, I looked up to my father. I wanted to play just like him. I wanted to play like Bianchi is playing now. What's Paolo doing? There's something different about the way he's playing. Could it be? Could Paolo be trying to play like Ray Dark's father to force him to face his true feelings for football? Paolo, I'm going to help you. The Tavero Jude? However strange it sounds, I cannot deny it. Ray Dark is the man who showed me how fun football could be. He was the man I once called Commander. That will never change. And so we'll kick back into the gameplay. No guaranteed goals off the back of that. In fact, we're going to take the ball back right now. So within literally zero seconds of the match, we've transformed Ray Dark from evil. I must win through any means necessary to we're here for a good time. Let's have an enjoyable match and still win regardless. Now, whenever the question is posed 
of what's better out of the game and the anime in Inazuma 11.3? It's an impossible question to answer objectively because they both just have their own things. The anime is going to expand more on the, the story, the moving moments like that. Whereas the game, you've got funny English localization and you can put anyone you want on your team rather than relying on whatever the story writers decide to do with Jordan Greenway. We've got a goal, excellent! Straight away, maybe they'll be... I, I'm sure they'll score at some point, but for now, we're going to take that lead and be comfortable with it. But, um... So while there is no better version objectively between the game and the anime, they both achieve different things, this is certainly a part which works better as an anime than it does as a video game. Because that whole scene with Paolo winning over Ray Dark, that's done over the course of several episodes through actual gameplay, through contextual use of... um, Oh gosh, we're going to have to stop this. Through contextual use of Paolo trying to replicate Tom Dark's movements. Through through dialogue, through Ray Dark actually watching stuff. Obviously, that is going to work a lot better. Hey, we stopped it! And if this move made sense, then it still would have been a corner for the Italians. It's like I've awoken from a long sleep to think that someone would revive the way my father once played. Father, I know football destroyed your dreams, but it seems I could never truly abandon it. It's like a curse has been lifted. Ray Dark can return to what he once was, a warrior whose only goal is true victory. Things are getting interesting. Hark, Jude, let's put up a fight. You got it, coach. So let's respect that, actually. Why don't we just go really try hard? Don't need to, but if I went to the trouble of... Oh yeah, that's a new thing. I was going to go Crescent Moon, but we only just got Rolling Thunder in the last episode. So let's give that a go. And a defender is going to have to try and score based on that. Can't pass to Hurley because he'd be offside. But yeah, so this match takes place over like three episodes in the anime, and that is obviously better than just a match against Orpheus. But you could also say that, the in reverse, the other Orpheus match against Team D is better in the game, because then you actually get to play as Orpheus, which is very interesting indeed. But there is also one other reason that this is better as an anime version, and that's because this being a video game, obviously you don't really want to be dealing with forced losses all the time and scripted gameplay like Alias Academy was. So you have to win this match. Like, I'll just go ahead and say that. If you want to avoid a game over, you have to win this match. As makes sense for a video game. But that is not necessary in the anime. Instead, what happens caught me totally off guard. I didn't see it coming. Italy's undefeated at this point while Japan, they kind of needed to win to guarantee their survival in the competition. A draw wouldn't have been enough. They would have had to rely on the outcome of the Argentina-America game. Say, if Argentina won against America, then actually in Azuma, Japan would have gone out. Indeed, though, in this match between Coach Hillman and Ray Dark, the final score is actually a draw, and Italy tops the group. And then, I guess minor spoiler, the fact that Inazuma Japan progresses in the game. Yeah, you actually see part of the match between Argentina and America, and you have to watch America win it so that Inazuma Japan can stay in the competition. It adds an extra layer of drama, and yeah, in terms of symbolism, it's much better for this to be a draw, and I like it that way, but unfortunately it's not possible here. It's half time and both teams will be weighing up their options for the second half. Wait, who's that? Someone's just walked up to the touchline. Hold on. Could it be? (sighs) 
Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> Capitano! Who could have predicted this? The Italian captain Hide Nakata has returned. Nakata is a brilliant midfielder who took Italian citizenship so he could play for Orpheus. The second half should be a thriller. Nakata, where have you been? Signor D, is it you? Lucia, what are you doing here? It is you, Signor D. Lucia, you had surgery, you can see. I know that voice, it's Paolo. Yes, I have had surgery. And it's all thanks to Signor D. Signor D, Perce? How do you know Lucia? Signor D wrote to me every day. He told me to stay strong. Grazie mille, Signor D. Lucia, you should go. I have no need for gratitude. Not from you, not from anyone. Lucia came to see your final game, Mr. D. Eh? Final game? I watched the first half. I know you've changed. The old Mr. D is gone. You cannot escape from who you are or from the crimes you're guilty of. In order to take revenge on football and achieve victory at any cost, you've caused so much mayhem. But then a girl who had nothing to do with football was caught up in an accident you caused and injured her leg. Lucia, you learned that the victim had been blind since birth and that only costly surgery could restore her sight. Lucia, so that's who Errol was. Ray Dark has been sending money to Italy to pay Lucia's medical bills. By helping Lucia, you wanted to atone for all you'd done, to make amends for all the harm you'd caused. You wanted to escape the darkness you were trapped inside. That's what you really wanted, isn't it? It's what you've wanted ever since you met a young man named Mark Evans. W what Me? So that's what you've been doing? Travelling the world, snooping? No, not at all. I learned all this by chance. Do you really think I did this all to help you? I'm not that nice a guy. Hello! I'm going to learn all about football. That way, I will have many things to talk about with you, Senior D. Lucia, I want you to see for yourself how wonderful football can be. I want you to see the sport that I have spent my life hating, but could never stop loving. Bentornato, Captain! Welcome back! Did you do what you had to do? Yes. I took care of it. Now I'm ready to get back on the pitch and play. It's been too long. Come on! Let's take on the Zuma National, and let's win! Si, Capitano! And he will indeed play! Some captain, he turns up for the second half of the last group match, even though Italy is already insured of qualification. I've still got Jude and Samford on the pitch, but they're out of TP, so they're not going to be doing much. And i gone with a forward combination of Axel and Sean, because actually the first goal scored in this match in the anime is Crossfire, the collab shoot between those two. So let's roll with that. No sort of scripted gameplay again. They've got Nakata on their field, their captain, and he is most certainly an incredible player, but he's not going to cheese the ball out of you. He's going to earn it fairly. Like, he is the single hardest character to recruit in the entire 
first three Inazuma 11 games. Well, he's not in the first one, obviously. But I'm saying he's harder than anybody in there. He is actually in the second game, despite there being no Italian team. And that's because Nakata is not actually Italian at all, as the commentator said in the scene leading up to this. Uh, let's see what their special tactic is for demonstrative purposes. It's Catanaccio counter. Six of them surround you, and then they take the ball. It's tough stuff. One of the best... Well, the, probably the best defensive move in the game, but we're still going to stop him with Planet Shield, of course. I love this move. But yeah, so Nakata, while traveling the world, he's just become an Italian citizen to play with these guys. But indeed, he is Japanese. And that's why you can get him in Inazuma 11 too. But you have to fully rank... You know how Pokemon lets you rank up your trainer card in Azuma 11 does a similar thing you can become like a master rank team and you have to do that first you need to have at least 70 players on your team you need to speak to a specific NPCs littered throughout the world who speak about a football and legend only in rumors and even then when you can actually play the match against him he's still ridiculously difficult to beat it's like a best of four or something like that. And you have to do similar stuff in this game, even though it's at least more telegraphed. You don't really know who you're looking for in Inazuma 2. But here, yes, it is Hide Nakata, the captain of the Italian team. A very good player indeed. He has a move called Brave Shot, which is a long shot. And it's also the move which takes up the most TP in the game. It's a nightmare. <laughs> but... We're just going to have to not give him any breathing space because, as we said, he's not going to get it. He's not going to get the ball for himself. He's a fair and balanced player, and that honestly kind of comes at a consequence to him. We want to see more Hide Nakata, but instead we're just going to score with Axel Blaze again because they, they to say Italy's the toughest team we've faced so far, it's kind of weird how actually... It's the easiest one. You know, England gets a guaranteed goal on you. Argentina is a guaranteed loss. America gets a guaranteed goal on you. And then you close out the group stages with the people who eventually top the group, even in spite of your victory. Orpheus and you share the same amount of points, but they're top of the group because reasons. But the actual match against them, they don't score against you at all. <laughs> It's just a, a bit of a freebie for you, but fair enough. It's about the story, and even though that story is told better in other mediums of Inazuma 11, it's an important one nonetheless. Uh, you know, that that Ray Darkman truly cares now, and the story about Lucia is quite nice, how he heals a blind girl. Oh, if I, if I had to lose any sense out of the five senses... Blindness is the one I would be least willing to go along with. I can cope with losing my sense of smell. I'd have to cope with losing taste. Um, but going deaf would be terrible, but at least there's ways to get around it. But going blind, that's just the worst imaginable thing that could happen. But Raydark has managed to sort out that problem in somebody's life. And clearly, he still loves football. He's done a lot of crimes and a lot of bad things which he can't really be forgiven for. But let's blast this guy with Sigma Zone and see how he reacts to his first loss since Zeus. And before that, like 40 years. I guess Royal Academy Redux lost as well. But, <laughs> yeah, he's had quite a lot of losses now that I think about it. But we will nonetheless see how he feels. Senior D, Dark. You are both true footballers. I know, it was something I once aimed for. To be a true footballer, like you. <laughs> How long is it since I last saw your eyes? It was you who gave me these goggles, remember? Here, put 
it is on. They will help you to gauge the flow of the game more clearly. Yeah, but if I wear these, won't they restrict my vision? Uh, well, give them a try. You'll find they focus your gaze on that which is most important. Look closely at the ball. You'll be able to see how it's spinning and predict where it's going to land. <sighs> Well, I suppose you won't need them anymore. No. I think I'll be hanging on to them if you don't mind. They are my trademark after all, right? Eh, I see. I suppose they are. That had the potential of being the best scene in the series. Hello. There is one thing. Doc, tell me, who's been hiding in the shadows, pulling the strings? Forty years ago, you sabotaged the bus that the Inazuma Eleven were travelling in so that Royal Academy could win. But you were still only a junior high school student. You couldn't have done that alone. Who is behind it? Who is aiding you? Who's helped you carry out all these evil acts? <sighs> You really think I'm going to tell you that now? Huh? Okay, okay. I'll tell you. There was someone who said they would help me and take away all the pain and suffering I felt. I believed his words and sentenced myself to four decades of unending misery. That man had established a global network that aimed to control football, and he had his sights on Japan. Who is he? Spit it out, will ya? His name was... Zulan Rice. Rice? You mean the chairman of the FFI board? The coach of Brazil? Do not underestimate Zulan Rice. His world is one of endless darkness. Ha! <laughs> so Ray Dark turned out to be worthless. I always suspected it would turn out this way. How would you like me to deal with him, sire? Leave him. Now tell me, how is my little program progressing? Is it complete? Yes, sire. Everything is in place. All you require now is a test subject. Splendid. It seems my real plan is now ready to commence. <laughs> What I was saying before about that cutscene, it has the potential to be the best cutscene in the series until Jude decided to keep the goggles on.